if Uttar Pradesh were its own country, it would be the fifth most populated in the world, right behind giants like India, China, the USA and Indonesia. Insane, right? With almost 26 crore people, it surpasses Pakistan's entire population by 15 lakhs. Think about it. This single state is home to almost 17% of India's and 3% of the world's population. But despite its massive size and population, UP's progress is relatively slow towards its goal of becoming a trillion dollar economy by 2028, as said by the state government. In FY 2324, the state's GDP grew only by about 8%, while a money control analysis shows that the state needs to grow by about 50% annually for the next three years to just touch the trillion dollar mark. The analysis also estimates that at the current growth rate, UP won't touch the trillion dollar mark by even 2036. In 2023, poverty also showed its side when around 3.4 crore people left the state to escape the lack of economic resources. Adding to that, UP is not just one uniform area, it's a state divided by unique identities, challenges and goals. Because of its unique identities and massive population, some areas feel left behind in terms of development. For example, things like roads, schools and hospitals are not as good in the East area compared to the rest of UP. There is a conversation that creating a new state would mean better resources and focused growth for specific regions. Another big reason is culture, since central UP, which houses a city like Lucknow, has its own unique traditions that are different from the western part of the state. So today, I am breaking down the controversial debate about whether Uttar Pradesh should be divided into smaller states or not. Uttar Pradesh is divided into three main regions, Eastern UP, Central UP and Western UP, with each having its own unique characteristics. Firstly, there's Eastern UP, which borders Bihar and Madhya Pradesh and includes cities like Varanasi, Gorakhpur and Ghazipur. This area is known for its rich history, but when it comes to development, it lags behind. Then comes Central UP, located between Madhya Pradesh and Eastern Uttar Pradesh, which houses major cities like Lucknow, Kanpur and Prayagraj. Obviously, being the centre, it has a mix of historical significance and fast development. Now, Western UP, which borders Delhi, Rajasthan, Haryana and Uttarakhand and includes Noida, Agra and Meerut, is the most prosperous part, making it economically strong. This area also has a higher per capita income compared to the other parts meaning that people living there are earning 25-30% to 30 more compared to the others. But while it is developed, we all know development in India comes with multiple struggles and industrial growth is just the start. Industries have rather slowed down due to corruption and crime, while casteism remains deeply rooted in politics, affecting voting patterns. Political power affects representation, government schemes are difficult to implement and denying the division is a no-brainer for the government as they might lose influence. This uneven growth is a major reason behind the push for dividing Uttar Pradesh. And as an idea, it seems reasonable. Smaller states might be better at tackling specific issues. For example, Western UP is thriving economically while Eastern UP is lagging. So, I get it. If these regions were separate states, they could probably manage their resources and development more effectively. The question is, was all this a sudden realization? No. This idea is actually inspired by the successful creation of other states in India. In the year 2000, India saw the bifurcation of three states which are Uttaranchal out of Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand out of Bihar and Chhattisgarh out of Madhya Pradesh. Then, the most recent one, Telangana out of Andhra Pradesh, was eventually created in 2014, becoming India's 29th state at the time. So, with all these cases, could splitting states really be a game changer? For that, we need to zoom into the growth these states have seen. After bifurcation, Bihar's growth more than doubled from 2.5% to 5.4%. Madhya Pradesh saw a massive increase from 5.4% to 7%. And when Chhattisgarh was formed in 2000, its growth went from 3.8% to almost 9% in recent years. But for UP, the story is different. Managing a state as vast as Uttar Pradesh is not an easy start. With 75 districts and a population larger than most countries, the process of creating new states is complex and the intense gap between all these regions don't make it easier. For example, western districts like Noida, Meerut and Ghaziabad are far ahead, showing up in the top 10 of the list of per capita district development in UP, while not a single district from eastern UP makes the cut. In fact, 
the economic gap between Western and Eastern UP is even more shocking. According to the latest data, an average person in the West makes around 1.44 lakh, while in the East, people make only about 80,000 rupees. That's a massive difference of almost 55%. So clearly, the shift is evident. While past state formations were about language and culture, today's demand in UP is driven by economic issues, unfair resource distribution and competition for local assets. But these might not be the only reasons pushing the creation of new states. They have now become secondary in most of these cases. It's also political. There is a major movement for creating Purvanchal out of eastern UP. The Purvanchal Gatan Morcha has been actively pushing for this divide, claiming that the eastern district of Uttar Pradesh have been historically overlooked in terms of development and governance. Other political groups are also actively protesting to push this agenda, hinting that they might escalate their tactics if their demands aren't met. If this isn't enough, some leaders themselves say that peaceful protests have not given results and that more aggressive measures may be required to gain the government's attention. Allegedly, parties like the BSP are eyeing potential electoral gains in divided UP rather than focusing on true administrative reforms or public welfare. This raises serious questions about the legitimacy of the demand as it looks like it is driven more by political elites than by public needs. That's not all. Another strong idea that these organizations are preaching is splitting Uttar Pradesh into three states, Purvanchal for the east, Harit Pradesh for the west, and a new Uttar Pradesh for the central region. With all these heavy asks, the authorities are feeling the heat but are unsure about what decision to be taken. In 2011, the then Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Mayawati, passed a resolution in the assembly that would divide UP into four major states. However, the Congress central government did not agree with this resolution. Mayawati depended heavily on this policy for the next state election in 2012. She expected people to vote for her due to this proposal. Unfortunately, her move backfired and the 2012 elections were won by the Samajwadi party who were against the division of UP. But that was not the first time when a statement regarding the division of Uttar Pradesh was in discussion. In fact, in 1955, B. R. Ambedkar, in his book, Thoughts on Linguistic States, proposed the idea of dividing UP into three states. After Mayawati's proposal, leaders of other political parties also spoke about it. Mostly, it was the opposition parties that spoke about it and not the ruling party. After 2011, no state government has officially recommended the creation of a new state, which is a necessary step in the process. The Home Ministry has also received various representations for the creation of Purvanchal, but it has not yet acted on these demands. The central government is keeping their safe distance and are being cautious as it could potentially increase regional tensions and demands from other areas as well. There is a real concern that the state's governance problems might not just be solved by simply building smaller states. It's important to note that the difference here is that the push lacks genuine support, unlike the strong public movement seen in regions like Telangana. Well, to say the least, the answer to this controversial argument doesn't depend on one aspect or one person. It's more than that. It's about big regional differences, a huge population, economic gaps and political agendas. For now, the state government has decided against it. But tensions are growing and the fate of millions of people depends on this decision.